Hey there. We're back in the uh, the tube area of the shop, and you can see what lovely backdrop of well, tubes. And about a week and a half or two weeks ago, I did a video on my long sought after prized tube, the Atatron. And I was very, very happy to, to get that and uh, do a video on it. And uh, someone actually posted that video to Hackaday. Uh, I forget who you did, who, who it was, thank you. Um, and it received uh, actually quite a lot of views and uh, generally liked. I uh, got some nice comments on it. Of course, it, there were a couple of trolls in the comments, but that's okay. And yeah, one of these days I will actually hook the thing up. Uh, there is data and get some addition happening, see if the tube is still good. Anyway, in the comments were a few bits and pieces about computer memory tubes. And specifically, there was a, a comment about the Selectron tube. Now, yes, computer memory tubes did exist. This was kind of before core memory and, uh, well, obviously way before semiconductor memory and DRAM and all that. Yes, they did make uh, tubes for memory systems. The Williams tube was, of course, the earliest sort of version, and that was kind of a interesting way of, of, of using a CRT. You could actually use a, a normal CRT, a, a stock CRT, um, and get the Williams effect. Didn't work all that well, but hey, it was a good first step. Uh, one of the more famous memory tubes was the RCA Selectron, and that was a fantastic tube. Didn't really go too far because it was just way too expensive to make, too hard to make. Now, the real star of the show when it came to memory systems with tubes was the Radicon. And uh, here's one here. Now, I was looking for my standard Radicon. The standard Radicon was the RCA 6499. It's an RCA development. Couldn't find mine. So this is actually one of the prototypes. It's a developmental type C73404. Uh, one of these days, the 6499s will show up. Anyway, as you can see, it looks like a CRT, specialized CRT, and that's basically sort of how it works. From here down, it's more or less a CRT. This one's electrostatic. You can, let's see if we can see in there. Oh, I'm getting all dirty. Uh, a little hard to see, but you can actually see the deflection, some, uh, two of the deflection plates. The others are probably under that shield. Now, the big innovation with Radicons is this structure right here, inside. That is actually sort of like a big capacitor. The idea is electrons shot from the gun will get deflected and land, the beam will land somewhere on this plate. And the plates generally are made of mica with a uh, uh, metal backing the charges will stick there like you like a st st stick a, uh, a a blob of clay to uh, to a wall you'll just it'll stick there electrostatic action and yes it will fairly quickly dissipate uh, because we're talking just tiny amounts of charge but you can actually store data with that now, the interesting thing is you can vary the, the blob size, so you can actually store both analog and digital data. Now, if you look at this, there we go, you can see the sh kind of shimmering on that plate. If we rotate it there, and it's kind of hard to see. There we go. That is actually a very, very fine mesh, a metal mesh. And that's actually more or less a grid. And the idea behind that is it keeps the charges separated and makes them stay put on the plate. You basically store your bits or blobs in between the wires of that mesh. On the surface here, on the plate here, or face, we have a bunch of electrodes here. This is for reading out the, uh, the data, because these basically attach to the other side of that assembly. 
to a metal plate. Now, apparently these things could store, uh, theoretically, about 16 kilobits. In, in practice, that wasn't really the case. Uh, you get some splatter and just, uh, hey, it's, it's, life sucks. It's not, it's not a perfect world out there. So you couldn't get the full 16 kilobits, but you could do pretty well. I don't know how much, 4K? I don't know, 8K? Um, and these things w did work sort of like old-style dynamic RAM. You'd have to refresh them. Uh, from reading the literature, it appears that a charge deposited on that storage, uh, storage electrode would last, at best, at best, half a second or so. Now, of course, half a second is kind of an eternity for a computer. Even in an old tube computer, half a second was a pretty long time. So, yes, you'd have to refresh this. Basically like an old-style 4164 dynamic RAM. You'd have to keep going, give it a, give it a refresh. Now, in, in this way, they would you know, recycle the data, cycle it back and forth, and, and you know, it would, it would, if it read a 1, it would have to write back the 1 to make sure it stuck. So, like I said, these things were the star of the show. And uh, these things were actually quite popular. It's just, they didn't get used very much in standard digital, digital computers. The place where these things were used, and were used for a very, very long time, were in radar sets, in the processing of data in radar sets. If... Uh, you could, you could store lines of radar video, either digital or analog, and use them in something called a moving target indicator. And what that does is it compares, it compares uh, over time each, each uh, pulse, or actually the return pulses, of a radar signal. And uh, basically, if, a pul if you're shooting... At some specific, let's say 270 degrees, and oh, three miles out there, you have a, a, a return that's stuck there and it's going nowhere. Yeah, it's, it's not moving. It's, maybe it's a mountain, maybe it's a building, who knows? But you don't want to always be looking at that. So you could actually do some very simple math, cancel that out, and it'll basically remove it from the screen to make the radar operator's job much easier. And MTI, moving target indication, was, uh, oh, it's, it's e even still standard to uh, modern radars. Of course, modern radars have all sorts of digital processing going on. But even in the early 19 and mid-50s, you could get uh, these MTI systems that would take out a lot of clutter and uh, just make the the uh, video that would appear on the radar scope just much cleaner. So you can actually see the stuff that needs to be seen and rather than look at a bunch of buildings or buoys or bridges or stuff that they're not moving and you really don't care about. So yeah, these things were used mostly in military radars, some commercial radars, used for a very long time. There were probably some Radicons still in service in the 90s, maybe 2000s. Some of the very, very famous military radars from the, uh, from the 50s and 60s used these things. And some of those stayed in service for an exceedingly long time. So anyway, that's more or less how a Radicon works. Basically, you're throwing blobs of electrons at that electrode, they stick. You can read them off within a certain amount of time period off of these pins here. And I think all these pins actually go to the same plate and they're, they're, they're just, might, might be just to cut down the inductance or something like that. No, there, there aren't actually what, eight different zones here. No, they're, they, they, I think they all go to the same piece of uh, metal. Uh, you could pull that data off recirculate it and stick it back there and you've got a nice memory system. All right, well, like I said, this is one of my developmental tubes here. And uh, 
actually I have two of them. Very minor differences. These are both RCAs, both developmental numbers are the same. One's a little longer, minor differences. Like this one has a real nice getter, this one doesn't. It's got all like a stinky little getters. Anyway, let's take a look at some others. All right, here's, here's one that uh, Raythan made, a QK464A. Very similar. Uh, this one's a magnetic deflection. And they used three pins on the front here and gave them nice color-coded uh, blobs for some reason. I don't know why. Like I said, this was uh, these were used in radar. So, oh, okay, it's got a 6835 as the standard number, and QK464 is the Raytheon number. QK sort of means... Uh, special tube. We also have another Raytheon here. This is a QK 685 or the 7571. This one apparently has been never been used because it still has the still has the protective cap. These were used in I think the FPS 20 radar, which was one of those radars that got used for a very long time. Slightly different construction. Looks like they might use this piece of ceramic. What's interesting is that Raytheon actually made a calibration tube. A tube used to calibrate these things. And here's one of them. This is a QK545. And it's basically just a CRT. With a strange screen there. And uh, I think the RMA number for this is 3BAP7. And all you do is, is when you're calibrating the memory system, you put this tube in, in place of this guy here, just for setting up the deflection. Once you have the deflection set up, you remove this guy, put it back in your storage check chest, and replace it with this. And your deflection will, well, hopefully be all set up nicely. Now the last Radicon that I have here, let me get it, stick it over here. This is a really weird one. This is a Varnecki. And uh, kind of a big beefy thing. I wish I had, I had two of these and one was broken. I got it broken. Unfortunately, I got rid of it. Otherwise, I probably should have kept it for this video. I got rid of it years ago. Uh, because I could take it apart and show you all the... Actually, what's going on. But it's basically the same idea. Now, Warnecke was kind of an oddball, very specialized tube manufacturer. I don't know where these were used. Specialized government stuff. This is a type RW1. Don't know any, any anything about it. But what's very interesting is... Maine Des Plaines, Illinois, and I grew up right near there, and I think I actually, we, I think we rode our bikes past the factory. It was a, just a very small little shop on, on uh, I think it was on Oakton, and um, no idea that at one time, even maybe back in the uh, early 80s, they could have still been making tubes. I don't know. This one looks fairly recent production, as in maybe 70s. Or uh, maybe 80s? I don't know, because of that tag there. That, that, that looks like a 1960s or 70s tag. Anyway, I don't have any data on this. A uh, Warnecke RW1. But as you can see, it's kind of have the same uh, base. And uh, very complicated looking thing inside. Looks very expensive. So, who knows? But just another weird storage tube. Okay, well, hopefully I've shed some light on these guys. The uh, Radicon Digital and Analog Computer Memory Tube. They were actually quite successful. They made a lot of them, but you never see them because they were always in strange equipment. Radars and large radars, specifically. But they actually worked. And they, they, uh, they were not displaced by core memory Yet they displaced uh, a bunch of different memory systems. Mercury, delay lines, core memory, Williams tubes, electrons, all sorts of things like that. All right, well, anyway, another little show and tell. 
I don't know if I ever get one of these things working because these things are, are sort of hard tubes to deal with. They, uh, they're very, they're, you, the drive electronics and the readout electronics are pretty complicated. Who knows, maybe one day I'll give it a shot. Okay, well, I hope you liked the video. Leave a like if you want. Maybe subscribe, maybe look at some uh, past videos. But yeah, the RCA Radicon and some uh, Radicons from different vendors. Okay, see you later.